Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, <laughs> one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item tonight is the presentation of the Ralph Gould Award. I'm going to step over to the podium. On behalf of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, I'm delighted to present the 2014 Ralph Gould Award for Community Service to Michael Duddy. Michael, would you join me here at the podium, please? I'm going to say a few words. Before I start, though, would you please uh, introduce your family who's here tonight? Uh, sure, I would like to. My wife, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Duddy, my son, Ben Duddy, my mother-in-law, Penny Armstrong, and my other son, Sam Duddy. If you'll all bear with me for a few minutes while I say a few words, and then I'll give you a chance to say something. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Since moving to Cape Elizabeth in 1999, Mike has been involved in volunteer service to our community in a variety of ways. For nine years, Mike coached community services youth basketball, Cape Youth Football, and Cape Elizabeth Little League. At St. Bartholomew's Church, Mike taught various youth liturgy and ministry programs for 10 years. From the years 2000 through 2010, Mike served the town on the Conservation Commission and also served as chairman. To highlight just a few of his many contributions in that arena, I would like to list some. He was one of the authors of the 2001 Greenbelt Plan, which shifted emphasis from improving public access to open space through trail development. He helped draft the Gullcrest and Winnick Woods management plans and worked with the DEP for permitting of those. He helped to design and build boardwalks and bridges and trails at the Great Pond Trail. He helped to design and build Great Pond boat racks and work with the Sprague family to clarify and define public easements providing access to Great Pond from Fenway Road. <clears throat> he helped to design and build the trails at Winnick Woods, the Gullcrest Connector at Fowler Road, and the Wooden Pedestrian Bridge, linking the Stonegate system to Fort Williams. He helped to design and build the initial bridge walks I'm sorry, bridges and boardwalks for the Highland Trail, and also helped design and construct the Greenbelt system at Cross Hill. He's led dozens of volunteer crews over the years with all, all of these efforts. Mike is currently serving as the town's tree warden. In this capacity, he responds to countless calls regarding trees and public easements and on town owned land. He answers numerous resident questions about tree diseases, hazard trees, tree selection, tree care, and planting. He directs tree resource maintenance at Fort Williams and on school and municipal grounds. As tree warden, he has, come, he has obtained a grant from Project Canopy to promote restoration of the shag bark hickory tree in Cape Elizabeth. And he has obtained a grant from a non national nonprofit to promote habitat for the New England cottontail. So congratulations again for being the Ralph Gould Award recipient for your service to the town. And would you like to say a few words? Sure. Uh, thank you, Jessica, and thank you to the Town Council. It's a real honor. Um, I took the occasion to take a look at some of the other folks who have received the award over the years, and uh, it's a very distinguished, impressive group of folks, um, from Carol Fritz to Ann Swift Kayata to last year's um, award winner, um, uh, John Mitchell. Mitchell. That's right. Uh, it's a great group. Uh, I'm not big on individual awards, um, and I accept this in the spirit of um, representing the Conservation Commission primarily over the years. It's been a fantastic group of volunteers. I remember when I first joined it well over a decade ago, <clears throat> Jack Roberts was then on it and very active. And I remember thinking, man, I want to be just like him when I grow up. He seemed to know everything about the town's trails and the open space. Uh, he was a great inspiration to me. 
Then as I got involved, um, hopefully I helped impact others as well. And there's a current uh, new group of folks on the Conservation Commission, uh, some of them here tonight that are carrying on the good work. Uh, in particular, Cape's a really special place to live. Um, it's a privilege to live here. I think it has been um, a great privilege to serve as part of a continuum of volunteers over the years who have worked within this um, large practical working consensus about how to be good stewards of our natural resources here in Cape. It really has applied to everybody from the citizenry, to the town council, to the town manager, Maureen, um, Bob Malley Public Works, and then our citizens boards. Um, it has been a consensus that really prioritizes quality stewardship, all within the context of a respect for private property and doing things in a fiscally prudent manner. Uh, it's been a real joy to work um, in the middle of that for now these 15 years, uh, and the town has a lot to be proud of. But um, on behalf of all of the folks who have done good work, um, I am uh, honored to accept this. Thank you. Town Council reports and correspondence. Are there any Town Councils who would like to report? Any correspondence? Or, Councilor Sherman? Uh, yes, uh, Councilor Wagner and I actually attended a, a meeting today of the Town Center Plan Committee uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, that was today, so hopefully <laughs> I'll uh, stay alert for tonight's meeting. Uh, but we had a very productive meeting moving forward with the update of the Town Center Plan. Uh, and we plan to meet again on February 10th. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I have a few items. Um, I'd like to thank the Public Works Department for their hard work clearing roads and sidewalks during the last few weeks of some pretty crazy weather. So thank you. I'd like to thank the Cape Elizabeth Garden Club and the Public Works Department for helping with the town's holiday direct, uh, decorations. Also, thanks to the Lions Club for working with the town clerk, Deb Lane, on providing holiday baskets for needy families here in Cape Elizabeth. And finally, I'd like to thank two private citizens, we won't, I won't name them, but I'd like to thank them for generously contributing money to help local families heat their homes. So thank you. Okay. Uh, we now have, uh, would we now please have the finance report from the finance chairman? Thank you. Um, we are going to be having our first full finance committee meeting later this month in January 29th in a workshop. At that time, the agenda that we're currently discussing is a review of our current budget, where we are year to date. Uh, at that meeting, the intention is for the manager to give us his overview of and precepts around 2015 budget process, which is now part of his annual uh, performance appraisal process. And um, the second part of that meeting, we will have a joint meeting with the school board to discuss the request they recently made of us to have a 1.75 bond uh, placed on the ballot. So we've had a chance to look at that, and we intend to do that later this month in our workshop session. And then on a go-forward basis, uh, the chair has asked that we um, take up a particular element of our financial plan at each of these meetings, talking about the detail that surrounds it, some of the background and history, and then um, the possibility for each counselor to have a chance to weigh in on things that are of interest and concern. So my hope is that we will uh, try to make these uh, finance committee meetings more, ro more robust, if you will, and. Uh, much more pertinent in terms of the finance of our town. So, thank you. Thank you, Council Walsh. Um, <clears throat> we now have an opportunity for citizens to address the council on an items, any item that is on an item that is not on tonight's agenda. Is there anyone wishing to do so? Okay. Now, I want to step forward. Uh, I believe the town clerk has an announcement that she would like to make 
I do. It's, it's not on tonight's agenda, but it's a late request. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Um, the town is seeking to know who our oldest citizen is. Um, the reason being is that we currently hold the Boston Post cane. Many of you probably are aware of the Boston Post cane. It was provided to about 700 towns in 1909 by the Boston Post. Um, this was done as a, an advertising gimmick for the Boston Post, and I think it was successful, being that we're still mentioning the Post 100 years later, and they folded in 1956. <laughs> so I think they did a good job with that. Um, so what we'd like to do, again, is seek our, our oldest citizen. When, um, in 1909, when the cane was distributed, it was to the oldest male citizen. In 1930, that changed to include women. I think it, my understanding about reading about this it was quite controversial, but I think with um, women being able to vote a few years before that, I guess they decided that they would include women. So in Cape Elizabeth, 20 citizens have received the Boston Post, including six women, uh, since we were given that. Uh, starting tomorrow, the information, the guidelines will be on the town's website. Uh, if you know anyone that may qualify, if you could go to the website, we've actually, we, our webmaster, Wendy Derzewick, has provided a filled document on certain information that I'll need to know um, to uh, have someone qualify for the cane. A uh, couple basic things. A holder must have resided in Cape Elizabeth for a minimum of the last 15 years. It may be given to a former resident living in a nursing home or with their family in the greater Portland area if the person spent the principal portion of their lifetime up to that point in Cape Elizabeth. So again, I announced that the Boston Post cane, uh, we will be presenting that to our oldest citizen, whether it be a male or female. Um, and we ask that I have that information by February 14th. So thank you very much. I appreciate the time. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, could we have the town manager's monthly report? Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman Sullivan. I just want to make mention that we had a number of transitions at the end of the year, obviously boards and commissions and other things, but two of them I want to uh, mention in particular. Uh, one is Eric Olson, who was with us for 29 years, retired at the end of the year. Eric was our garage foreman. He was our chief mechanic. He, he uh, took care of everything from rider mowers to school buses to ladder trucks to all of the public works equipment. Uh, the police cruisers, uh, everything that you see in Cape Elizabeth, loaders, uh, the greater, uh, everything that you see that rolls up and down the road, uh, Eric was responsible for making sure it was safe, making sure it was taken care of, and making sure that the investment was protected. And uh, he did retire. We wish him well. Uh, 29 years of service, and he, he just did a great job for us. Uh, the second retirement w was actually uh, effective. I get confused with the calendar with the way it's been the last few weeks, as I think a lot of people do, but it was last Friday. And Pauline Portria retired after about 16 years of service. Pauline is the school business manager, uh, but, but that title you know, doesn't fully uh, capture everything she did. Uh, she, in addition to being the primary person involved in uh, uh, putting together the school budget, uh, she also oversees, has oversaw uh, all the folks who do the payroll for the town, all of the accounts payable, all of our general ledger accounts, was involved in the, the management of the mainframe of our computer system, uh, was involved in the municipal investments, and I could go on as well as you know working with the facilities manager, with the cafeteria uh, director, with transportation. Uh, all those issues. And she's just been an invaluable person. Uh, she is going to be, they haven't uh, replaced her yet. Uh, she is irreplaceable. Uh, but anyway, there's an interview committee that's going to be meeting, I think, it, later this week, Jim? Thursday. Thursday. Uh, that's narrowing it down. She has agreed to still uh, help out a couple days a week, uh, but we thank her for everything she's done and uh, wish her well in her official retirement, even though she's still. Uh, with us a little bit. And the third person actually didn't transition away from us, but, but marked a very significant anniversary, and that uh, is Ed Hunt. Uh, Ed, uh, on December 31, 1973, 40 years ago, uh, be began work as a dispatcher for the town of Cape Elizabeth, public safety dispatcher, police and fire. Uh, despite the fact that we eventually uh, consolidated dispatchers, he actually stayed with us. Uh, he's, he's been the, the department clerk. He, you know, over the course of the 40 years, he, he moved uh, not only as a dispatcher, but he was a head dispatcher. He was a head dispatcher 
uh, when we did the consolidation with the city of Portland. But just a tremendous guy. If you go into the police station during the week, he, he, people not, may, may not as, know his name, but he's the person that's there at the counter uh, that helps you out. And, uh, he has probably, over the years, taken more phone calls and heard more stories of what really goes on in Cape Elizabeth than anyone. So uh, just, a, just a great guy. And uh, he, he's also, with, with his 40-year anniversary, we have, he's the most senior person serving in a regular working full-time position, which excludes volunteer firemen, uh, firefighters. He's, he's the longest serving current employee of any school or municipal employee at 40 years. And he's also the longest serving full-time municipal employee that the town has ever had. So uh, he's just a wonderful person. And uh, he's still a young man. I think, uh, not to give away his age, but I, I think he started right out of high school. So. Uh, anyway, uh, 40 years, we thank him and look forward to him continuing to serve Cape Elizabeth citizens for many more years. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, it, would the, uh, would, could I entertain a motion? Our next item is a uh, review of the draft minutes of the Dem December 9, 2013 meeting minutes. Would anyone make a motion to approve the December 9 meeting minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous and the minutes are approved. Thank you. Okay, we're now on to the next item, which I suspect is the reason many of you are here in the audience tonight. This has been a long process and we certainly realize this is an important issue to many citizens and we expect to vote tonight. But before we start our council deliberation, we can hear from the public on this item for a limited amount of time. Um, I've got a couple uh, thoughts on this. I'd like to ask members of the audience who are interested in speaking tonight to just please stand for a moment so that we can gauge how many citizens are likely to speak. So if, you, if anyone interested in speaking, please just stand for a moment so we can have an idea of how many of you are gonna speak. Okay, we have four. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. So, as long as that number doesn't jump considerably, what I will, what I will, what we'll do is just allow people to come up as they're ready. If my thought was, if we had a large number of people wanting to speak, I was going to ask that each speaker have an alternate point of view. So we would have a proponent an opponent, a proponent, an opponent, to balance the input. But as there are only four members so far of the audience that want to speak, I don't think we need to do that. So I'd like to open uh, public comment and remind everyone that this is three minutes a person. We have a 15 minute limit. And uh, also that to please uh, refrain from approving or disapproving of any comment and to remember that we're all citizens in a civil society. Thank you. Good evening. Bob Steer, 9 Rockcrest Drive. <clears throat> Three minutes isn't very long, so I've written a lot of letters to you. And in the focus of those, the focus of those letters has been on whether the town has the authority to put a trail over the Surfside Avenue Paper Street, and most recently, where that trail would run. Uh, I have tried to be respectful and helpful and to ask the questions that I would want answered if I were sitting where you are. But tonight I want to focus on the resolution that has been put before you, in particular on paragraph 11, which says that after adopting the plan, the council will consider a separate resolution about paper streets. And that seems to me to be exactly backwards. The Greenbelt plan that was submitted to you says in the very first sentence, the Cape Elizabeth Greenbelt is a collection of open spaces with legal public access rights. And we now know that this plan is one where trails currently exist on land that the town does not own. And whether the town has legal public access rights to the land requires a separate determination with regard to each piece of property. There are no shortcuts when it comes to private <clears throat> property law. 
And when you make shortcuts, you end up regretting them. So how can the council be expected to accept this plan without first knowing that the town has the legal right to put trails where they currently exist? It's telling that this resolution does not say the town currently has legal public access rights to the entire Greenbelt. It doesn't say that, and it couldn't say that, because that wouldn't be true. But that's the standard that we're holding ourselves to if we accept the Greenbelt plan. That's what it says. That's the first thing it says. And so until the current problems are fixed and you're confident stating that the town does have legal public ac access rights to all existing trails, how can you accept this plan? So what should you do? Send this plan back to the commission. It's their responsibility to get this right. Have them recommend how to deal with the existing problems after thoughtful consideration rather than putting yourselves through a rushed decision on these complex issues. And in the meantime, you would be saying to the residents of Shore Acres that this is a neighborhood dispute and that everyone would be better off if you figure out how to solve it among yourselves without the town taking sides in the matter. Thank you, Mr. Sear. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Good evening. My name is Sarah Lennon from 54 Cranbrook Drive. I just have a few questions I wanted to pose um, in the hopes that you might contemplate them briefly before you cast your vote. Um, one, would you support the construction of this path across your own backyard? Two, would you wish to walk through five backyards just feet away from porches, jungle gyms, pools, and picture windows, essentially taking a stroll through private family lives. I, I know I would not. Three, why was this the only contentious path that remained on the conceptual plan? Four, are you aware that constructing this path will be challenging, including obtaining a permit from the DEP? Five, have you considered the issues of potential liability with a precipitous cliff that drops down to rock and ledge? Six, are you concerned about inevitable lawsuits and if so, are you willing to spend significant tax dollars on lengthy litigation for an uncertain outcome? Seven, are you prepared for the possibility that litigation will result in removing every path on a paper street from the entire Greenbelt network of trails? Eight, do you feel that the inclusion of this particular trail will be in the best interest of all Cape citizens? And finally, do you see this as a neighborhood issue more appropriately resolved through mediation rather than litigation? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Sutton. I live at 10 Pilot Point Road, and I see the ocean about 500 feet in front of my house. That's about where this trail would run. I've hiked or walked or cross-country skied or, or snowshoed on just about every trail in this town. And um, I think it's, that was one of the reasons why we moved here six years ago, was because of you know, all the great trails you have here. But um, I have to, have to say that the ocean view from the uh, Surfside, proposed Surfside Trail is startling it's it's remarkable it is <clears throat> something that i would put on par with uh the headlight and the view from the headlight and um, i i just think that everybody should be able to enjoy that kind of a view especially if we already have a paper trail or papers paper street 
Thanks. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Sue Garrett, Two Cotardon Road, Cape Elizabeth. Again, I would like to um, echo my statement I made at the last meeting. This is for the good of the community, not now, but the future as well. And I would also like to just um, comment on the um, issues of the path in Shore, Road, um, in Shore Acres. Um, the path to Shore Road is in front of families' homes. The path to Shore Road is in front of long, windy, curvy roads that has little protection for pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, that was not challenged to my knowledge. I was not asked about my usage of that. I use it frequently now and enjoy it, and I would like to let others in our community enjoy Shore Acres. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maynard Murphy. I have lived at 24 Pilot Point Road since 1998. I'm speaking to you tonight to say thank you not only to the Town Council, but also to the Conservation Commission for the good work you have done and are doing, especially on this issue of the 2013 Greenbelt Plan. My family and I are grateful to live in a community where the town government takes its job seriously and thoroughly investigates the various aspects of the issue at hand and acts on behalf of the greater good of its citizens. We appreciate that the Council votes in such a way as to protect or benefit the rights of its greater population and not in a way that benefits a very few at the expense of and detriment to the greater community. Now with all the hard work you have done on this issue, we trust and hope that you will have come to the conclusion that will most benefit the greater good of our community. And I urge you to vote for the acceptance of the 2013 Greenbelt Plan in its entirety, inclusive of Surfside Avenue. Thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? We'll close the uh, public comment. So, <clears throat> moving on, item number 34, proposed update to the Greenbelt Plan. Do we have a motion? Councilor Ray. I move to accept the following motion. The Town of Cape Elizabeth resolution adopting 2013 Greenbelt Plan. Can uh, everybody hear me? Yes, and, and Councilor Ray, I, I'd like to ask you to read the resolution in its entirety. This is for the benefit of those in the audience who don't have a copy and for the benefit of citizens at home. So, thank you. Whereas the Town Council finds as follows, one, the 2007 Comprehensive Plan strongly supports preservation of open space and the Greenbelt Trails Network. Statistically valid surveys conducted in 2005 and 2012 demonstrate that open space and Greenbelt Trails are highly valued by Cape Elizabeth residents. Two, the town has a long history of Greenbelt planning dating back to the 1977 Greenbelt Plan, followed by plans in 1988 and 2001. The 2013 Greenbelt Plan estimates 24.5 miles of current Greenbelt trails. Three, the Complete Streets National Transportation Policy advocates a design approach whereby transportation infrastructure provides safe travel for all modes, including those walking, bicycling, and driving automobiles. These policies are supported in the town's road standards and the comprehensive plan. Many communities have streets where only pedestrian traffic is allowed. Four, all town Greenbelt plans have included a map of potential Greenbelt trails depicted on public and private property. Potential trails described within the 2013 Greenbelt plan are intended as conceptual locations and will only be placed on private property with the willing consent of the property owner. Five, in 1996, the town of Cape Elizabeth prepared the report inventory and evaluation of paper streets in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. The Town Council subsequently adopted and recorded a motion in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds on September 11, 1997 in Book 13317, page 151, 
which extends for a period of 20 years, all proposed. Unaccepted ways except those denoted on tax maps as U71, U72, U73, U74, a portion of U75, U29-2, and U29-5. Six, a report to the Town Council dated December 2, 2013, depicts numerous examples where Town Greenbelt trails are currently located in paper streets. There is an estimated 2,500 linear feet of Greenbelt trails currently located within paper streets, often providing the only connection for a neighborhood to adjacent town-owned open space. Several paper streets are also identified as potential future locations for Greenbelt trails and serve as important connections to larger open space parcels. Seven, in connection with the Shore Acres neighborhood, the Town Council engaged in a thorough street vacation process in 1991, Bayview Road, 2002, <coughs> Bayview Road, and 2004, Katahdin Road extension and a portion of Wombeck Road. Since 1971, the town has retained its rights <coughs> excuse me, in all paper streets and would only release such rights using the street vacation process. Eight, Surfside Avenue and many other paper streets are shown on town assessing maps independently of adjacent lots. The assessed value of the lots on Pilot Point Road abutting Surfside Avenue are discounted from full value waterfront lots because of the presence of the paper street. Nine, at the time the Shore Acres subdivision was recorded in 1911, it was common practice for streets to accommodate pedestrian traffic as well as a variety of vehicles. Motor vehicles were not common at that time. 10, there has been extensive discussion and review of the 2013 Greenbelt Plan. The Conservation Commission held 14 meetings on the subject. These meetings included two public forums, special meetings with the Cape Farm Alliance and the Riverside Cemetery trustees. The Town Council held six meetings, including two workshops, a site walk at Surfside Avenue, and a public hearing on December 9, 2013. 11. Following the adoption of the 2013 Greenbelt Plan, the Council intends to review and consider a separate resolution formally accepting all paper streets within Greenbelt Trails, with, within which Greenbelt Trails are located. Now, therefore, pursuant to Article 2, Section 3 of the Council Manager Charter of the Town of Cape Elizabeth, the Council hereby adopts the 2013 Greenbelt Plan. Thank you, Council Ray. Is there a second? Second. Council Walsh. Is there any discussion? Council Wagner. Yeah, first I'd like to thank the uh, Conservation Commission for their hard work and their thick skins through this whole process. Um, for me, uh, I think that the uh, Greenfelt, Greenbelt plan should be modified to remove the Surfside Trail from the plan. And the reason that, well, there's two reasons that I believe that, sh uh, or three reasons I think that should be done. Uh, one, I believe there's unresolved legal issues regarding the town's legal rights to build the conceptual trail. Uh, I had requested factual data from the public at our last meeting regarding historical use of the trail. And what I received back from the public did not convince me that the undeveloped portion of the conceptual trail was sufficient to establish legal rights uh, for the town. Um, unfortunately, I see this as an acrimonious dispute in Shore Acres, and I think it's ultimately a private property dispute. It should be uh, resolved by the neighborhood. Um, I do not make this recommendation based on the threat of legal action, because I'm confident that there's going to be legal action that goes forward nonetheless. And I think the town will be party to that because it would be a necessary party. So regardless of how we vote tonight, I think there's going to be a lawsuit that the town's going to be a part of. So pursuant to um, Section 3 of the Town Council rules, and uh, we'll let other people discuss this first, but I would uh, propose division of the question and move to amend the pending motion to delete the Surfside Avenue Trail from the 2013 Greenbelt plan. Thank you, Councillor Agnew. Would you again repeat that as an amendment to the motion on the table? 
So that the town clerk can record right. it. I move to amend the pending motion to delete the Surfside Avenue Trail from the 2013 Greenbelt Plan. Thank you. So I believe the procedure at this point is to ask if there is a second to Council Wagner's amendment. I second it. Council Jordan seconds. At this point, I think we take a vote of the Council on the amendment. Is that correct? Now, let me check with the town manager. I think we take a vote of the Council on the amendment proposed by Council Wagner. Is there any discussion? No. Oh, seeing none. All those in favor of Councilor Wagner's amendment to, as, let me ask the town clerk to read it back, if I could, to remove. Yeah, is to yeah. amend the original motion to delete the reference to Surfside Avenue Trail for the 2013 Greenbelt Trail. All those in favor? All those opposed? The amendment fails. So we return to the original motion on the table. Is there any further discussion to the motion, the original motion? Councilor Sherman. Yep. I also want to echo what Councilor Wagner said in terms of thanking the Conservation Commission <clears throat> for all of its hard work on this. And I know it's been a long process and probably a difficult process at, time, at times. I also want to thank uh, all of the individual residents, whether they were uh, for or against the Surfside Trail or any other element of this uh, proposed Greenbelt Trail plan for coming out and speaking uh, or writing emails. Uh, you, you know, it, it takes energy and sometimes guts to, to, to stand up for what you believe in and to send emails, even if you think that some folks in the community may react unkindly or sometimes with hostility to your points of view. So. I really do respect the fact that so many people have taken the time to participate in this. Um, you know, it, it, the, one of the uh, hardest parts of serving on the council is making a decision like the one we're faced with tonight when there are people in the community that I've known for a long time or that I've known of for a long time that I've known have been uh, good citizens that I know who have supported uh, a lot of good works in our town with their time, their talent, their treasure. And you know, here I am about to cast a vote that's going to make them unhappy. And I don't like doing that. But at the end of the day, I evaluate the issue in terms of what is best for the town of Cape Elizabeth. And I think the inclusion of the Surfside uh, Avenue uh, Trail in the, in the Greenbelt Trail plan uh, makes sense for all of the reasons that the Conservation Commission has articulated uh, in its deliberations as well as for the reasons that have, have been set forth in, in the motion that uh, Kathy Ray read into the record tonight. So uh, although uh, I'm not happy about making some people unhappy uh, with my vote tonight, I am uh, uh, very much a willing supporter of this motion and plan to vote in its favor. Thank you, Councilor Sherman. Anyone else? Councilor Jordan. I just going to echo both Jamie and uh, Dave about thank you to the Conservation Commission, but I also want to echo um, Jamie's comments about the legal issues that I have as well with use of paper streets moving forward with a uh, Greenbelt Trail. I think there's a lot of things still unresolved and I don't fully believe that the intent of a paper street was for recreational pedestrian use. You can look at the historical uses back in the 1900s. Yes, there might not have been many vehicles, but those were roadways that people were walking down, not recreational trail paths that the pedestrians were using back then. So to stretch that, to me, is, is a bit of a stretch. Um, I also don't agree with all of the reasons the conservation put forth for having the trail. I don't believe that there is great connectivity there. I don't see that possibility, I guess, as clearly as they do, as well as I don't find that the neighborhood to be underserved. They have a wonderful access and views at Trundy Point. And I also took into consideration the cost-benefit analysis that um, Jamie mentioned about the lawsuit. We're going to have a lawsuit either way, I do believe. But you want to look at, somebody mentioned the greater good. Is the greater good for us to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars possibly in a lawsuit for a few people to have a, a trail, you know, to fight against a trail, or is the greater good to spend all that money and then everybody gets to walk on this trail? I, I don't think it's the best interest of the town to spend lots of money 
on a legal outcome that we're not sure of. So I'll be voting against moving the Conservation Commission's recommendations forward. Thank you. Are there any other councils that would like Jessica. to speak? Council Walsh. Um, uh, first of all, I, w I too want to echo what people say. Um, thank you to the, the uh, Conservation Commission for all of its hard work. I also um, thank the citizens who have weighed in, and there have been many and often over the last year. And I appreciate the, um, the things that people have told us. We've learned a lot along the way, certainly. And um, if it's been any indication in the last two days, I mean, the, the number of emails we've received with the number of um, suggested approaches and even some uh, possibilities of having the neighbors get together and solve this problem on their own. I mean, you, you, we've, we've been open to what's taking place. A little history here. Five years ago when I got elected to this board, one of the concerns that people had is that decisions like this were made in smoke-filled back rooms, that there wasn't the chance for folks who had a vested interest in the decision to weigh in in the early stages of the discussion. In the last five years, a lot of my contemporaries up here are part of, of bringing about, I believe, a process that has allowed folks to weigh in early, weigh in often, and weigh in in, in various ways, whether it be in writing or in person or in private meetings. And over the last several months, I've had a lot of that, including private discussions with people I've taken private walks across this area, having somebody show me exactly what I needed to see. Met every um, resident who lived there. I'm sure it was pre-planned. It wasn't uh, just it just happened. Um, and I was on a gravel road, but I've gotten a letter recently saying I don't know there is a gravel road, or I maybe I don't know, or maybe we don't know. The concern I have is that I believe that this process has brought about a much more complete view of what's taking place. This is a plan. It is a green belt plan. We have a, a comprehensive plan for this town. We have a Fort Williams plan. We have many plans that we utilize in managing this municipality for the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. It is just a plan. The way people make me feel when I read these letters and when I hear people that it's, it's over, that we're going to just bulldoze down the road, put street lights in, and have people parking on Pilot Point Road. It is a plan. And over the last several years, we've had to deal with some pretty contentious issues here in Cape Elizabeth. The Shore Road path was one where we heard every possible iteration of what was going to go wrong. None of it's happened. Roosters, if you've been part of any of those discussions, it's just amazing how that polarized a whole community with all kinds of what ifs. None of it happened. Short-term rentals, meetings at the fire station with 100 people yelling at us with every possible iteration of what was going to happen to our beautiful community, our seaside community. A year and a half later, it hasn't happened. So while I appreciate the input, I want you to understand as an elected official, I've tried to weigh out what my role and responsibility is here, and it's to listen to all this input, and it's to make decisions based on the facts. One citizen called me on the phone a couple of months ago when I was chair, sitting in that seat, to tell me to cut off all future input or discussion. Stop it. Stop it now. And went so far as to say, that a decision ought to be made right this minute based on the facts. So what we have tonight is a resolution that was written to state the facts 
as we know them. It was read out loud tonight so there'd be no confusion on anybody's part as to what we're voting. So as a town councilor, somebody who cares deeply about the town, I care deeply about its citizens, I understand there are going to be people who agree with things and not agree with things. And frankly, this is not an easy job to be in because as David said, we don't want to upset people. That's not why we got elected. But I believe very strongly that the future of this town and this decision are one and the same. This is about the future of the town. It's not about today. It's not about tomorrow. It's about the right thing for the future. And I believe that the Conservation Commission took a lot of heat. These are volunteers. I believe that the staff took a lot of heat. And even some things that happened about staff that just crossed the ethical line for me in a civil society, in a community that's supposed to be one of the best, if not the best in me. So I would like to just simply state, I intend to vote in the affirmative on this, including Trail 23, because I think it's the right thing for our town and I think it's the right thing as a counselor who is elected to represent all the people of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you, Council Walsh. Council McCausland. <clears throat> so we know democracy is messy, even here in Cape Elizabeth. I know it was a long, hot summer for a number of people for a number of reasons. I would like, as everyone else has, to thank the members of the public for their participation in the process. I'd especially like to thank the members of the Conservation Commission as well. I know they worked very hard preparing the plan, and I know they did a great job managing the process. As for the plan itself, I'd like to say I think it is a well-done planning document. It spells out a vision for preserving open space, for maintaining the town's rural character, for preserving wildlife habitat, <clears throat> excuse me, and for giving residents access to trails connecting open space. I think it's the right vision. I think it will serve as a guide for the commission's stewardship responsibilities for the future. I'd also like to speak very, very briefly to the concerns raised about trail number 23. I'm not insensitive to the concerns that were raised. I've read every email and there were a lot of them. I've responded to many of them as well. However, I do think that the town and the commission have a history of responsible management and sensitivity to abutters. I know there's no history of any takings associated with the Greenbelt process, nor are there any contemplated in this plan. And as for the issue of connectivity, I'd like to point out that a Greenbelt plan develops over a period of time. And it's obvious from looking at the Greenbelt plans from the past. I anticipate that that will be the case here as well. Finally, I'd like to thank Sue Garrett. Um, she came here tonight and spoke again. Thank you. Sue came and spoke to the council at our meeting last month. She drew the analogy to the Fort Williams purchase many years ago. And at the last council meeting, she used the words forward thinking good stewardship, caretaking for future generations. I agree with her assessment of this opportunity, and I'll be voting in favor of the resolution to adopt the Greenbelt Plan. I think it's the right thing to do for the community today and for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments by any other counselors? I'll just say a few words. I'd like to thank all of our citizens who have expressed their thoughts. We've been hearing, we've had hundreds of emails. We've had various meetings of all kinds. And, um, and we've, most of us have responded at least to, you know, a good portion. I've certainly tried. And, um, and we are sensitive to what citizens have expressed. Um, I want to thank the Conservation Commission for their hundreds of volunteer hours they spent putting together this updated plan for their efforts at public outreach and engagement. And it has been an arduous task and at times very emotionally charged. I've certainly witnessed that myself. In the end, though, I think it's important to remember that this is not an implementation document. It is a planning document and nothing more. 
I think that it is consistent with its predecessors and it is respectful to town policy and procedures as they have been going along in the past and, and as they project for the future. So I will be voting in favor of this. So let's proceed. All those in favor of adopting the green, updated Greenbelt plan. And opposed. It passes five to two. Okay, moving on. Item number 35, review and action on draft town council goals for 2014. We discussed these at a workshop and we have goals before us to uh, vote upon. Are you looking for Is there a, a motion? Are you looking for a motion? Yes, please. I move that we accept the um, Cape Elizabeth Town Council goals as stated in our packet today for the year 2014. Is there a second? Councilor McCausland? Any discussion? <laughs> Councilor Wagner? Yeah, under the uh, community engagement portion, uh, um, I only had a. Um, yeah. Maybe it was just a, a drafting question I had. The third bullet there that said the town council will enhance use of social media? Yes. I guess I'm just a little confused about what we're trying to get across there. I don't know whose bullet it was, but. Uh, we, I think it was Councilor Sherman yeah. or Council that, that Maybe in, initially like spoke encouraging that. the use of social media? Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked in the past about how to get the council more into the 21st century in terms of social media, whether that's <clears throat> Facebook or Twitter or I don't even know what half of these things mean, frankly. But uh, it was the, the notion that we really ought to become more proactive with social media, given that's how so many folks today especially those younger than me, uh, communicate and keep up with things. I mean, for example, today I learned about a two-hour school opening through Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think so many people are signing on to Facebook, so that, that was the idea. Gotcha. And the, the other one that uh, I saw a couple down from there was the town council will consider opportunities to maintain email lists for informing citizens of local issues. I just wondered whether or not the burden that we'd be placing on the town would be rather monumental compared to just having, we have such a good website already mm -hmm. that you can go to and access all that information to try to monitor and update email, send emails, I think it might be too much of a burden. Any discussion? Council Jordan? Well, I, was, I, th I thought our point of that was to have like email lists for certain groups, like make sure that when we're dealing with the Farm Alliance, we have the Farm Alliance's current email and when dealing with you know, the Education Foundation, we had the right, right president's email. I don't, I, it was my impression that it wasn't a citizen, town-wide citizen town email list. It was just more specific. more specific to make sure we were getting the right information out to the right people. Okay. So do, do we want to, do you want to make a, an um, amendment to those, Jamie, to clarify them a little better? I mean, uh, or does that, or does it, it does that, does Council Warren, does that satisfy your, your question? about those maybe if we items. change it to informing specific citizens or groups of citizens of local issues sure yeah, instead of just the all it's citizens. a little clearer right. all right so then that would constitute would that constitute an amendment to the original language or to change since i moved it yeah I, can i i'll accept that language in my motion if that's okay would you repeat that council wagner so the town clerk knows so that? we'll add in the words after informing for informing specific citizens or groups of citizens of local issues you got it do you have it okay. oh, thank you and so so i've accepted it okay you need the second to <laughs> that's all i have and we need a second. The second to accept those. The, the language. I think Molly. 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 Did. Molly. Do I need to do something? Do I? Other than to. Are you seconding? I'll second it again. <laughs> Councilor. Okay. I have one. Pardon? I have one. Um, under community improvement, uh, we have the town council evaluate. Excuse me, Council Jordan. I think to be correct, do we have to accept one amendment at a time instead of having multiple amendments? Or. It's always good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Could I have a vote? All those in favor of accepting the change no. that Council Wagner has requested? Unanimous. <laughs> Opposed. Oh, it was unanimous. I'm sorry. Okay, Council Jordan. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Under community improvement, the town council will evaluate opportunities to enhance access to Crescent Beach for commercial fishermen. I just didn't know if we could add the Kettle Cove, Seal Cove, and whichever you want to reference it as, so not just to limit it to Crescent Beach, because there's opportunities to enhance Kettle Cove as well. They're considered separate. I think that makes sense. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll second that amendment. Okay. That's what we need to do. So we need, now we discuss it. Is there any discussion on Councilor Jordan's request? What, Councilor was, what was the third one, Seal Cove? Well, Kettle Cove is sometimes referred to as Seal oh. Cove. Just I don't know what the official <laughs> term should be to go on record. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor of her request, Councilor Jordan's request? It's unanimous. Okay, moving along. Is there any other, anything else? On I have a question. Yes. On all of those um, goals, how do they make it onto the agenda? What's the process for moving those forward? Yes, let me, let me ask the town manager yeah. to address that. Yeah. Council Cousin, some of them, are already moving forward and mm. every month or, or more often I meet with the council chairman and we're always discussing what's going on in future agendas and we already have things penciled in for the February workshop yep. February for, for the next meeting mm -hmm. of the council and you know those will be rolling out you know I, I keep I've always reminded council chairs that we don't do it all in January February <laughs> uh, but uh, you know for example the one uh, council Jordan just mentioned we have penciled in for February as, as one of the topics of discussion. So each, all of them are, some of them are ongoing, but the ones that require specific action by the council, the council vote to get something started, for instance, most of those we try to get started in January and February. Great. Which Great. is like the next item, the Senior Citizen Committee, it's ours. But they'll, they'll, you know, if there's one that you want to see advanced, let uh, Chairman Sullivan or myself know, I mean by advanced, you want it done right away. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, it's an excellent I'll question. Be excellent question. Any other discussion on town council goals? Council Walsh. Uh, just a, a, a point. Um, last year or the year before, did we send a copy of these out to all the chairs of all of our commissions? And I thought we were. A I little, don't recall. We, we did a, we did sort of a, a, a communication to them to let them understand that they may have work that is essentially part of the body of work that we have made our priority. It might be a, a good technique. That's all. Just a thought. I, I agree. And Councilor, no, no I'm sorry. Go ahead. I agree, and I also, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I remember that a year or two ago we used to ask the boards and commissions to submit their goals to the council. Yes, we did. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. So I think... Um, Part of that. To wait. We can go ahead and request mm -hmm. of the town clerk that I'm guessing, if this would this be the way to proceed, that she, the town clerk could send the goals to the various board and commission chairs? And we'll, we'll send them through our okay. staff liaisons. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great, Anything thank you. else? All those in favor of accepting the town council goals as amended? <clears throat> it's unanimous. Okay. Next item, number 36, Senior, Vish Senior Citizens Advisory Commission. This is one of the goals that we've discussed, um, that we discussed in our workshop. Um, uh, the draft motion, uh, orders that the town council would approve of a senior citizen commission and the concept behind this would to be would actually be an ad hoc committee that would form for 12 months and at the end of their service they would help determine whether or not this should be a standing commission um, so could i have a motion to approve item number 36 a senior citizens advisory commission 
Councilor Sherman? Uh, yes, I move that the council approve the creation of a senior citizens commission to review how the town can best serve its older citizens. Is there a second? Councilor Ray? Second. Any discussion? Uh, what I didn't include in as part of my motion is the draft charge, or do, shall we take that up as a separate uh, motion after we voted on the one that I just made, or would it make more sense to include the draft charge in my motion, which I'm happy to do? Um, why don't we go through this draft charge? Okay. Uh, well, while we're then talking about the draft charge, it's a very broadly, generally worded charge. And I can imagine that that would then allow this group to consider a whole host of issues, some that we may anticipate and others that, you know, depending on the expertise of its members, we may not. But I'm willing to have it be that general. I just wanted to be sure everybody else in the council mm -hmm. was okay with that. It, it, you know, I've served on these ad hoc committees where the charge may be a bit freewheeling and, and that can either be a really good thing or sometimes get us into trouble because uh, people start to disagree on what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so uh, again, though, I, I, I think it makes sense to keep it general, but I, I thought it was worth at least having a discussion. That's an excellent point, Councilor Sherman. Is there any other, are there any other thoughts on that? Councilor Jordan. No, I just think it's a good idea to keep it general. I would hate to fine tune it too much and keep them from being able to present ideas that we haven't thought of. Okay. Councilor Wagner. Yeah, I agree with David and Caitlin on that point. The only question I had was, um, having served on the appointments committee was, what if we come up shy of seven uh, nominees? You know, would we want to still go forward with a, you know, five up to seven or something? Or uh, I know we, we've struggled with that once or twice before. Yes, um, I, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, uh, let me ask the town manager about that. If we don't, so we if, if we had, right, if we had five. If you want up to seven, yeah. just change it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, uh, sure. and uh, another, uh, to that point, I mean, I, I can certainly think of some professionals in the community that specialize in elder care services. I mean, there is an agency or business right in the IGA shopping mall, I, I believe, that specializes in, in this field. So it would be wonderful if we could attract people like that that know, have some expertise in the field. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I'm new to the appointments committee, but uh, have, have individual council members on the appointments committee reached out to try to encourage those types of folks from, to apply? Uh, I've done that before. Yeah. Okay. In the past. Yeah. Without success sometimes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, but it's, it's an excellent point. So I, I, I guess I would encourage then everybody in the council if they know of folks who might have a particular area of expertise to mention this to them because although it's published in the Courier and <clears throat> you know the right people may not hear about it. So. Thank you. I just want to say Matt Sturgis is going to be uh, the staff liaison to this That's committee. Gonna, so cool. if anyone wants to have the air of the tax assessor, it will be a good opportunity. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> that may increase the applications. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other any other discussion or comment on that? So Council I made the motion, and so I would accept the up to seven members of, up to as seven part of members. my motion. Uh, and I don't know who seconded it. Uh, Council Ray did. That's right. That's fine. Okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. All those in favor to accept the motion with the uh, that change in language? Uh, it's unanimous. Okay. Item number 37, the town manager's evaluation. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What did I? No, oh. no, you, did, you, you were doing right. Yeah. But usually I should have put that before oh. the second session. Okay, yeah. Um, we now have an opportunity for citizens to discuss items that are not on tonight's agenda. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to do that for items not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none. We'll move on to item number 37, the town manager's annual evaluation. Um, we need to go into executive session for this. We need to vote to do that. Is there a motion? Council Wagner? Move that we go into executive session to discuss the town manager's annual evaluation. Um, Council Wagner, I'm, I apologize. 
I should have um, mentioned that with this one in particular, we need to read the entire motion and note the statute. All right. Uh, uh, move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council in conformance with 1 MRSA section 4056A hereby enter into executive session to begin the annual evaluation process for the town manager. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. So do I say that we'll be back after this? I don't think we will be. Okay. We'll just be publicly adjourning it. Okay. But not now. No, there'll be no more action tonight. Okay. No, the state statute says so you have to cite the statute. Yeah. It's on all three.